Hi guys, I'm Anissa and I'm back with another video and today it's Friday the 21st. It's already almost dark outside. I mean, it's been overcast all day so the sun hasn't really been through at all. But this is all I could get out of the light today so <laughs> bear with me. Um, I haven't filmed anything all week. I was supposed to upload a wrap up last weekend but I was very busy Um the Christmas stress <laughs> if you will um, came um, as usual so there was a lot of things I had to do last weekend and therefore I didn't end up f filming a wrap up um, so I decided to do a Friday reads kind of video today where I'm wrapping up the books that I've been reading for the past couple of weeks because I know I'm not going to be filming a weekly wrap up on Sunday I don't think I will so I decided to do a Friday reads instead and then we'll see what happens <laughs> since my last wrap up I have finished six books so I have a six books to talk about I'll try and keep it short the first book I finished since last time was The Sign of Four by uh, Arthur Conan Doyle the second book in the Sherlock Holmes mystery series and this I listened to in audio form so I listened to this uh, narrated by Stephen Fry which is definitely a good experience he's a good narrator and has a good voice for a lot of the characters. Um, that being said, I don't think I ever got fully invested in this mystery as a whole. I really enjoy um, Sherlock Holmes. Usually I have a fondness for, for this um, universe. I enjoyed the first one a lot more than I enjoyed the this one, I think. I mean, the mystery-wise. Um, so, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see what happens with the next one, but I'm falling on about a 3 out of 5 stars for the second book. Um, I think the next part will be a lot of short story collections, because I think that's the first of the short story collection. I think it's called The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes or something like that, but I'm not sure about that. The next thing I finished was Undead Girl Gang by Lily Anderson. It was really, it's been really hyped amongst the other booktubers, I think, and it follows this, uh, we follow this um, girl, I forgot her name right now, but she is, has just lost her best friend, she died and she's at her funeral, that's when we start. Everyone, like the police and everyone is just deeming that being a suicide, but the main character doesn't believe that it was suicide because why would she commit suicide and there was also two other um, friends who died past earlier who also looked like they had committed suicide and how was it that there was three suicides in the span of a week and so yeah this is where it starts and she decides because she has like Wiccan ma magic that she wants to try and um, prove that it's not true so she gets a sort of dark-ish book that um, leaves her to um, a, a spell that will resurrect her someone and so she tries to resurrect her friend to figure out what actually happened and that is the basic start of this and I'm not gonna go into more details about it because I think it's it's fine to leave it like that I enjoyed my reading of this I think it was a funny story it was um, I'm used to a little more um, I don't know paranormal aspects of stuff like this um, with, with witches and stuff where this was a lot more contemporary than it was fantasy and I still really enjoyed it I thought that the main character was interesting and for the most part I enjoyed her I thought that the friendship she had with her friend was interesting as well and um, there were times where I didn't really like the main character the way that she viewed others and the way she talked to others speak, spoke to others because yeah but I think it got a lot of messages um, about bullying and how there are always two sides of a story and how you can't judge one person based off one action. Um, yeah, I thought that was a pretty good thing. So I ended up on about a four out of five stars for this one, but I didn't love it completely, but I was enjoying it. I found it entertaining throughout the whole book. So four out of five stars for this one. The next book I finished was Murder on St. Mark's Place by Victoria Thompson. This is the second book in the Gaslight Mystery series. And this mystery was a whole lot of fun to be part of, even though I sort of guessed at least part of the mystery um, quite early on, but I still found the process of getting to the end pretty interesting. I really enjoyed seeing the development of of the two main characters, Frank and 
and Sarah, um, their relationship together and and also their professional lives and how they uh, did that. And then there was an added information about how mute and deaf community in that time period, this is set in New York in the late 1800s, how that was working, how much you knew about what to, you were able to do back then and how you dealt with it and that was really interesting and was not part of the mystery itself so it was sort of a side story uh, in the story and I really enjoyed that so I ended up on a 4 out of 5 stars for this one as well I've really been enjoying reading these books and I cannot wait to read on in the series and I definitely recommend it if you're into mysteries at all and if you want some type of different setting that you're used to uh, because I definitely enjoyed the late 1800 vibe um, and how the police um, um, detective work was back then, but they didn't always do the right thing. The next book I finished was Pelham by Ellen McNeil. This is the second book in the World of Linaria series. This series is written in multiple perspectives. Um, I believe the first one was as well. Um, and in this specific book, we are following Pelham, who is like on the front here. And then we follow Amara and Sapora and, and Isa. And I really I enjoyed getting back into this world. It had a little bit of a build up because I think that the first one got a sort of solution. There was a, like a big war happening towards the end of that book, and I think it like had to restart itself, like the book. So it had to build up some momentum. Where the first one like it threw you right into the war stuff, and it it was really fast paced from the beginning. Um, but I enjoyed seeing how Pelham um, was grieving. He lost a couple of his very some pretty close friends in the first book. I'm not gonna say more than that because it will be spoilery if you haven't started it. Um, but he definitely dealt with some grief and and anger in the beginning, and I was interested in that part of it. And then we have Amora, who is has become my favorite character of this whole. Um, of this series so far and she is a sort of sky pirate and yes she has her airship and and all of that and her de determination is to do something that I can't say because it will be spoilery to what happened in the first book but it, this that route was my favorite and then we have um, Sapora and who is the new king or leader of this world and we see things from his perspective and then we have Aisa who is um, also a princess in this world where Sapora is now um, leading and her experiences and what she gets through. And my favorite two parts following this over the whole course of this book was um, Aisa and Amora's point of views. They were definitely the most fast paced and you definitely got to know some interesting things happening in this world. Uh, my least favorite part was uh, Sapora, no doubt about it. Um, I think this was an overall really good second book. However, there were some pacing issues in the beginning where we had to like get the, another build up. And so, yeah, um, that's why I don't give it higher rating, but I really enjoyed it and I cannot wait to find out what will happen in the next book. And I would like to thank the author. She sent me a copy of this, but that's not what I want to thank her for. She writes like a summary of Maroda in the first like in the beginning of the book and so she just reminded me what happened in the first book without me having to go and reread it and I would just like to say thank you for doing that because or not I've never seen that before and people should do that more often because it will definitely make it easier getting in, back into a series without having to reread all of the books again to figure out where you are where you're at with the whole thing so that was nice and yeah, um, also I'd like to thank the author for sending me a copy of this because I've definitely enjoyed reading it and yeah. So four out of five stars for this one and highly recommend it. If you haven't already read the first one, definitely go and read it. I have a review on my channel up here and so please look at that. The next thing I finished was Saw Kill Girls by Claire Legrand. This is the a new October release that was really hyped has received a lot of hype here on booktube and so I was interested and I decided to get around to it immediately but when I saw it was on overdrive I reserved it and it came in here in December and I thought I was getting an ebook but it was a, an audiobook so 
yeah, uh, a little surprised about that. So I had to an unexpected audio I needed to get through. Talk Hill Girl is set in a small town and we follow basically mostly girls in this town. And there's this legend floating around the town and where girls have been disappearing, never having been seen again. And so you try and figure out what is going on with that. I don't want to say a lot about it because I think that going into a book like this is without knowing too much is the best way of of reading this book. Um, the atmosphere is really interesting. Um, and this is a very feminist sort of book with mostly girls in all of the roles maybe. And, and they have like uh, lesbian uh, relationships and stuff. And yeah, um, my one of my only complaints is probably that the at times the feminist part of this was a little I don't know, I don't want to say true feminist, but you know, they like, um, basically just letting us know that all men are the same and they're all terrible and the world would be a better place without men. And I don't think that time of, um, um, of message is the right one. I don't think that feminism is about, um, <laughs> removing all men from existence but more or less just equality in my opinion feminism is a lot about being equality and so it goes i would say it goes both ways um however there was definitely also times when i really enjoyed the book but there was like a couple of places where it's like really <laughs> um that was probably a little bit over the top for me um but those are my only few complaints about this book otherwise i really enjoyed it and so the atmosphere itself was really interesting and i thought it was pretty creepy the audiobook could have been a little better, in my opinion. Um, I'm not good with audios, apparently, when it's to, supposed to be scary. Um, I don't think a lot of audio narrators scares me, so I think that left a little bit from me as well. But yeah, I ended up giving it a 4 out of 5 stars anyway, because I really enjoyed it and I will definitely recommend it. So if you're interested, definitely consider checking it out. And then finally, today I finished A Virgin River Christmas by Robin Carr. This is the fourth book in the Virgin River series and I expected going to this getting a just a normal romance from the Virgin River series where I was just seeing a bunch of things from all of the different couples that I've gotten to know over the past three books um, because that's what it's usually been and then a lot of Christmassy vibes added into it but I didn't get all the Christmas vibes that I wanted I did get a pretty decent romance story I did enjoy the two main characters of this um, it was good but I missed some Christmas spirit. <laughs> I think that it, it lacked a little in that area. So I could definitely have read this like in summer and not thought about it as a Christmas book. And I think that's wrong when you have Christmas in the title. I want Christmas in the book. I mean, it was Christmas towards the end, but it was still, I didn't get that vibe. So yeah, um, only for the last, last 10 minutes or something <laughs> of the audio. Um, so that was a little disappointing, but I end up on about a three and a half stars for this book. But I'll definitely read on in the series now. I'll try and keep it short now because I really feel like I've been talking for a little too long. Um, what I'm working on right now, I didn't start a new audio on the way home because I wanted to listen to Christmas music to get in the Christmas spirit. But I am, I'd say, less than 100 pages away of finishing um, Feast for Crows, so I'll definitely finish that soon. Um, I thought I would have finished it yesterday, but I I didn't. So I'll definitely finish it one of the next two days um, when I do things at, here at home. I have plans to start on Northern Lights by Philip Pullman. Um, Raya from the book Finish is doing a read-along of his Dark Materials series, and I haven't started it yet, but I feel like it's a very perfect time to read it. Um, so I have a couple of days off now because it's Christmas, so I feel like I could finish this over the next the next um five days if i want to so that is the physical book that i want to read um and if i have more time i also have started on the atrocities by jeremy c chip i think that's the name if i remember correctly i started this actually early in the week and i thought i would have finished it and it's it won't take long to finish it because it's like only 100 pages long and i read the first 30 percent so about 30 pages and um, I have about 60 pages left. It shouldn't take me much more than an hour 
and a half maybe, <laughs> if I'm slow. Um, otherwise, I have started on Only Human by Sylvain Novell, like before I started uh, Saw Kill Girl actually, but that was when I realized I had to read that before it was expiring from the library and so I will get to Only Human when I, when I get back to work on the 27th. Once I finish A Feast for Crows, I'll be digging into The Fireman by Joe Hill and see how much I can get through it. I probably won't finish this in, in December, but I'll definitely give this uh, a go and see how far I can get, because I would like to get through this book fairly quickly so I can get on with my TBR unwrappings. So those are my reading plans for this next weekend, the Christmassy days. I will probably film something over the next coming days. Um, if I don't manage to film anything, then definitely a Merry Christmas to you. And I hope to anyone who celebrates, if you don't celebrate Christmas, have a happy holiday. And yeah, um, I'm looking forward to tonight. We're gonna have a lot of fun. My, all of my family is gonna, gonna gathering tonight with, I guess like all seven of us, <laughs> my brother and my sisters and my nephew and my sister's boyfriend, um, are gonna be at my parents for dinner and then later my uncle and aunt and two cousins will join us and we'll have a lot of fun times I think. Anyway, let me know in the comments down below what you've been reading recently and whether you have any interesting recommendations to me. If you've read any of the books that I've been talking about today, definitely let me know about it as well and if you agree with my thoughts about them. Also, um, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in my next video very soon. Goodbye.